important call coming through for you. Roger, flight. Uh, good evening, NASA. This is the president. I know you're busy, but Mrs. Tyler and I wanted to take a moment to wish you the best of luck in launching the first satellite from our space shuttle. This is a real feather in the cap of America's space program. Also, I want to pass along a special hello from my son Bobby to NASA astronaut Stephen Bancroft and Lou Price and to Air Force Colonel John Gates. All of us in the White House wish you well. Uh, listen, Congress has been after me to hold down the budget, so I better keep this short. After all, it is long distance. So good night and Godspeed. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's get back to work now. We've got a satellite to launch. Can you confirm these? Seven minutes to launch. I'm getting a red light from the satellite, Colonel. Roger. Looks like a comm module. Let's check those we'll go out and have a look. Connectors. Revise and confirm launch status. You're counting to launch. You want me to hold the countdown, General? No, I don't. That satellite's got to be launched on time. Six minutes to launch. Hey, I wonder what that satellite's going to do. Probably flush all the toilets in Moscow. <laughs> what was that? It's coming from the shuttle. What's going on up there? Uh, I think uh, the colonel's looking for a parachute. Airlock pressure is equalized and the light is green. We're closing the airlock flight and stepping into the cargo bay. Five minutes to launch. Uh, stand by for satellite launch positioning. We're proceeding with the countdown, Steve. Man the launch arm controls. Here it goes. I'm moving to the satellite now, flight. Colonel, check all LX switches. Uh, launch mode B and C. Main D1 and launch program recall. Roger, Capcom. I see the problem. Four minutes. What is it, Colonel? Alex is affirmative. Main D1 is tripped. We've got a loose module here. Can you reset it, Colonel? Roger, Capcom. She's locked in. I'm getting an affirmative reading now. Stay in the cargo bay, Steve, in case this thing goes haywire again. Good idea, Colonel. The system is verified. Proceed with launch countdown. What's that? What? Something going like a bat out of hell. There it is again. What is it, a meteor? Not unless a meteor can make a U-turn. Colonel Gates will maintain EVA position. Three minutes to launch. Okay, Steve, go ahead and connect the extension arm to the satellite. How does it look to you, Colonel? Smooth so far, Steve. I'll keep you posted. Roger. Flight? Roger, Orbiter. We're picking up something pretty wild on radar. Do you read it? Bob? Yep, we see it right there. What the hell is that? Captain, call no red. Two minutes to launch. Are you sure this is working right? Let's check it on the B mode. No, no, we're getting it there, too. I'll keep checking it. I'm ready to lock in the remote arm. Looks good from here, Steve. Go ahead. Connection is verified. Take it away. Roger, Capcom. Here we go. How's it looking, Colonel? She's lifting out nicely and on her way up. One minute to launch. She's at the top, Steve. Looking good. Satellite is in position. Proceed with launch sequence and countdown. Roger, Capcom. I'm returning to flight controls. T minus 30 seconds. 29. 28. Steve. What? 27. According to the radar, 26, that thing is right over us. There it is. They're trying to get a fix on the speed. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Scale.
Steve. Steve, Lou. What happened? Come, come in, come in. Come in, Orbiter. Well, check it again. I don't know. Steve, Lou. Come in, come in. Come in, Orbiter. Roger. What happened? Whatever that thing was, the satellite hit it that exploded. Steve. Is it Steve? It's Gates. Gates? We lost him. He's dead. What happened? How? I guess some debris from that satellite must have hit him. His helmet was torn off. People, we still have two men to bring home safely. Shuttle, we have 20 seconds to loss of signals. We'll make re-entry over the Indian Ocean Station. Do you copy? We copy. something over there. What the hell is that? Give me a pass through to General Morrison. This is General Morris. What have you got? I, I don't know, General. It's the weirdest damn thing. Well, what do you see? Lights in a circular pattern. Take us lower. What's it look like? Just lights. Uh, no markings. No visible sign of life. Not outside. General, what should we do? General? General? 
circuit now. Gordon Kane, the president's chief of staff. This information should go directly to the president. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you want with me? I want you to go there, Harry. Set up a team. Check it out, top to bottom, inside and out. Flight, we are setting up for re-entry attitude. Roger. Feet and 28 degrees. You're doing fine, Arthur. Roger, fine. Looking fine. Stand by for real. Roger, Phil. Fine here. Fine. 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 to bother you at this hour. What can I do for you? I have some information that should go to the president immediately. What is it? Well, we believe we have an alien spacecraft in our possession. I don't want to talk about this any further on the telephone. Meet me at the White House when you get to Washington. Yes, sir. Orbiter, we have you on our video. How do we look? You're looking real good. Stand by for gear down. Descent rate stabilizing. Roger, Capcom. That's an affirmative. Ready for the gear? Gear down. This is Chase One. I have visual confirmation. The gear is down. Roger. Speed brakes extended. You are on the glide. Roger. Feels real steady. 100 knots. 90 knots. And there's a... Colonel Gates' family. Oh, no, you haven't got time. The Air Force will take care of it. Who cares about the Air Force? Come on. Can't you take it up to Harry when you get to Houston? You got a plane to catch. All right. Hold it. Stop the car. It's right here. It's right over that rise. Sam? It was here. It was right here. Sure, Sam. It was. I saw it. Steve saw it. Gates saw it. I know, Lou. I know. And I saw it. 
Then why don't we look at the telemetry tapes? Because we already know what's on it. it it's not necessary. It's, it's, it's all going to come out in the report. Now, that's all you have to know for now. Everything is going to be all right. Harry, just trust me, OK? OK. That's better. So what you're saying to me, General, is that we have a flying saucer in our possession. Yes, sir. Now, it's too fantastic even to consider. Yes, but it's there. The investigation team, what is it, mostly NASA people? Yes. They know all about the satellite, everything that happened up there. There's no way to keep them out of it. Besides, it's their field. I thought it was best to move fast on this. No, it's fine. Obviously, they were the right people to bring in. But this is still all speculation. I mean, un until we get inside that thing, who can guess what the hell it is? Whatever it is, we've got one. What facility was it moved to? An Air Force base in Texas, Hangar 18. NASA took it over a few years ago and converted it into a manned lunar flight receiving station. Will it work? It's got everything we need. Decontamination chambers. It's got computer facilities. It's got biological labs. Who's handling security? Ordinarily, NASA would. I ordered Air Force personnel in last night. Good. All right, it'll take a lot to set up. You'll need a briefing procedure. The side Department of Defense will want CIA to get full reports. Of course. OK, I, I can make those contacts, get things set up at this end. Somebody's going to have to talk to the press. Yeah, that's right. This is the first time a US astronaut has died in space. The papers will be crawling all over the story. Now, wait a minute. We're getting into a problem area here. The election is only two weeks away. You both read the Harris poll this morning. It's too close to call. It could go either direction. So? What's that got to do with our situation? Well, what we don't need right now is a lot of inconclusive speculation and wild rumors floating around Washington. What they find in that hangar may have a crucial effect on our space program, maybe even our defense. Gordon. You aren't suggesting that we back off this thing, are you? No, no, of course not. We've got to continue the investigation, check it out thoroughly, find out everything we can. We must proceed very, very carefully. Duncan Tyler is the best president this country has had in a long, long time. And I don't want to blow this election because of rumor or panic. We've got to keep this thing under wraps for two weeks, just until the election is over. Two weeks? Are you sure that's the right approach? Do you remember when Senator Stoddard said publicly that he saw a UFO and the president went after him on it? He asked the country, would you feel safe electing a man president who said he believed in flying saucers? And the next week, Stoddard dropped seven points in the polls. It was a joke. Some joke. Yeah. I mean, you know what it would do to his chances for re-election if the public found out that we had an alien spacecraft parked at a NASA facility? Now, you've heard Stoddard's speeches. You know what he would do to the defense budget. Do you know what it would mean to this country if that man was elected? Just what are you asking, Gordon? Keep the lid on Hangar 18. Mm -hmm. Well, their living quarters right there in the hangar. Any communication in or out has to go through my office. What about the shuttle crew, Bancroft and Price? Yeah. They saw the satellite hit the UFO. They're going to want to talk about that. They could create some problems, then. The best thing we can do is to take the initiative. Be prepared to discredit their reports. Oh, come on, Frank. Is that necessary? It would only be for two weeks. Then we could clear things up, take them off the hook, officially. Maybe if we talked with them, brought them into this thing. No, I don't think so just create more security leaks down the line. It's best for them to not know any more than they already do. I think you ought to keep an eye on both of them, though. Right. Well, gentlemen, we're in agreement, then? 
All we need is two weeks. Yeah. Steve, this is Flo. Who? Flo Matson in public information. Oh, yeah. Steve, have you seen the morning paper? No, why? Well, take a look at it. Then you and Lou had better get over here. Okay. What the hell is this? How can they blame us? I tried to find out where the story came from, but there's no byline. The newspaper wouldn't tell me a thing. I just don't get it. Who'd float a story like that? The Air Force, honey. Why? To cover themselves. But this is stupid. I'll never get away with it. But they're saying that you guys are responsible for wrecking a satellite and killing a man. Flo, we didn't do anything. The satellite hit something. And we can prove it. Eight seconds to launch. Here we go. Seven, six, five. Where is it? Four, three. Where's the blip of that thing we saw? There's the explosion, but that's it. Either we imagine this whole thing, Lou, or the blip of the UFO has been erased. Let's go talk to Harry. Harry, we just took... Where's Harry? He's been reassigned. Where did he go? Well, I don't know. It's classified. Top secret. When's he coming back? I don't know that either. Outside, fool you, Phil. That's just for security. Come on. Let's have a look. crazy stories about UFOs like everybody else and didn't believe them. Well, it's not something that most people want to believe in. Is there any exterior damage? No. None. We think it was a controlled landing. It means someone brought it in and that someone is still inside there. Well, we'll know more when the others arrive. Who? Well, aside from the NASA technicians and engineers, there's uh, Neil Kelso, linguist. For translations. Yeah, the very best. And uh, Sarah Michaels and Paul Bannister, two doctors. Just in case. I wonder what they're like. Second thought, I'm not sure I want to know. I do. You know, buddy, if they hang this thing on us, we're through. And I don't just mean with NASA. We won't be able to get a part-time job flying a kite. I mean, Harry said we were in the clear. Yeah, Harry. 
I wonder if Harry knew about those doctored telemetry tapes. Man, I don't know. All I know is that we're being made the fall guys in this thing, and I don't like it. It's scary. Maybe it's time to go to the newspapers with a story. What story? Lou, we don't have a story. We claim the satellite hit a UFO. You know what the Air Force is going to do? Drag out that fake telemetry, and we're going to look like idiots. Case closed. You're real encouraging. What do you want? Wasn't Crown Mountain one of the stations that monitored us? Should have been. They always do. Oh, they're pretty remote. I wonder if they still have the telemetry and it hasn't been fooled around with yet. Hey, it's worth a shot. Yeah, I got a friend at Crown Mountain, too, George Turner. Well, why don't you introduce me? Okay. I don't know if he's your type, though. He's a lot shorter and a lousy dancer. We'll live and work right here until we're ready to finish our report. Neil, you uh, mentioned talking to your wife. It was a red telephone down in the conference room with a direct line to General Morrison's office. That is our only contact with the outside world, I'm afraid. It's so restrictive, Harry, isn't it? Well, it's meant to be, Sarah. And I know how difficult it's going to be for you and Paul working together in the hospital. But until we fully understand what it is that we're dealing with out there, then we simply have got to keep this, this whole project completely under wraps. I assume you've all read through the procedural breakdown and yeah. uh, acquainted yourself with the facility. So if there are no more questions, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Sarah and Neil, you'll be in the observation booth. Paul, oh, i got a surprise for you. You're coming with us. Infrared monitors will also scan the Forbes camera faster. All readings computed and combined with main monitors. Monitoring all stages. Question. How do we open it? Another question. Do we want to? The magnetometer readings are rising.
What do you think? Engine room. Right. Pressure suit. Must be another deck. Yeah. But how do we get up to it? That's your orbiter. Yeah. Time. 12 seconds to launch. 11, 10, 9. There it is. And there it goes. George, can we have this tape for a copy? This is a Department of Defense operation. You guys couldn't get out of here with a coffee cup. But George. Now look, guys, I just did this as a favor. If the brass knew I even let you in here, I could lose my job. All right. Could you at least project where that thing came down? Sure. This will pinpoint the location based on trajectory readings. It'll compute the area of impact and then focus on it. Right there. Bannon County, Arizona. Thanks, George. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can laugh all you want to, but I know what I've seen. Sure, Sam, sure. Well, what do you know? His name's Tate. Mm -hmm. How many men you got down there? Two. They went down immediately to check out the crash site and secure it. That's how they ran into this guy. Well, how much trouble is he going to be? I know he's talking, but is anybody listening? Not really. But that isn't the problem. Bancroft and Price are on their way to Bannon County. Oh. Well, that's not good. The crash site's been cleaned up. But I sure wouldn't want them running into this Tate guy. His story would confirm what they saw. Well, what is he? What does he do? Construction worker, mostly. Unemployed right now. Hmm. With a lot of federal projects down there? Get him something. Get him a job. Right. Oh, and uh, Bancroft and Price. Keep me briefed on what they're up to. Of course. Looks okay, Harry. All my indicator lights are green. All right, Sarah. Get a couple of gurneys in here on the double. That's it. Boys, we can get out of these monkey suits. Careful. Be careful. 
careful, he's real heavy. Quick, let's get him into the lab. Come on, let's get the other. Barely. She's in a deep coma. She has very weak vital signs. She needs the kind of medical help that we can't give her here. She should be in a hospital. All right, I'll take care of it. Get me Gordon Kane at the White House. Uh, yeah, this goes up to the flight. Bill. Bill, I want you to get a crew to go over the outside of that ship with a fine-tooth comb, see if they can find any damage we may have missed. I don't care if they have to use a microscope. I don't care how small the damage is, even a pinhole. I have got to find out whether those men were dead or alive when the ship landed. I've got to find that right. Oh, Phil! There's a couple of glass beakers or vials broken down on the lower deck. Have those analyzed, too, will you? And I saw what looked like a library in there. Have Kelso check it out. Yeah, sure thing. Here are those preliminary reports you asked for. What do you think? Well, I sure didn't get this equipment at Radio Shack. Close it up. Let's try the other one. you're doing? Harry, if we're gonna find out anything here, we can't keep our hands in our pockets. We've got to do something. Yeah, well, be careful. Keeping her under close observation. We've got a group of computer staff people running a trace, trying to get some kind of ID on her. I don't like it. There are too many outside people involved. We've got too many loose ends. Don't worry. We're keeping very tight security. The campaign is going well. Things are running smoothly. We've got to keep this thing bottled up. You understand? Look, Gordon. 
I'll take care of it. Bill's right. We've got to find out what makes this thing tick. Everybody okay? Everybody all right? Look at this. through it like butter. How you doing? We need a place to tie down for a while. Just leave a set right there. Ten a day. Uh, say, you wouldn't happen to have a uh, car we could rent? Nope. Uh, we need some way to get around. You know where we could rent something? Yep. Where's that? From me. I thought you said you didn't have a car we could rent. Don't. Got a truck. And you didn't ask me about no truck. You asked me about a car. Truck. Ain't got no car. A truck will be fine. It's around the side of the hangar, keys are in it, it's 20 a day. Of course, you buy your own gas. I, I ain't no millionaire, you know? By any chance, have you heard anything about a crash that happened in this area a couple of days ago? Crash? Oh, you must be talking about that crazy story Sam Tate's been telling. Dragged the sheriff out there and everything. <laughs> Said he saw a flying saucer come down. You know, like like on the TV. Uh, where was this? Shoot, I don't know. You, you better ask the sheriff. You know, it's it's the desert air that does it. Does what? Dries out your brain juice so you can't think straight no more. Happens to everybody out here. You know, I think we better talk to the sheriff. <laughs> Thanks. America's military strength has substantially decreased. Despite the brisk weekend weather, the streets of New York were bustling with activity. But we expect snow by early next week. The gasoline shortage has not greatly affected the transit systems in Montreal or San Francisco. Apparently, they've been recording our broadcasts. So when you think... They must have been monitoring them. This announcement, paid for by the committee to re-elect President Duncan Tyler. Harry, what is that? I don't know. They had it at the beginning, too. I've seen it before. 
damn sure. I know it's here somewhere. Right here. What is it? This is a symbol for the Earth. What makes you say that? Because it was on that film or tape or whatever it was we saw. And it reminds me of something else. I'm going to check with research. So we went out there to take a look around and found just about what I half expected to find. Nothing. I hate that Sam deliberately lies. It's just the way he is. You have to take him or leave him. He even called Washington, made at least five phone calls to Herb Pope, or Herb's our local congressman, to tell him about it. Sheriff, where can we find Tate? Don't know. Well, that's the other thing about Sam. He's just a drifter. Comes and goes, ambles off to work somewhere, and, and comes back and nests till he has to go out and find a job again. So you think he might have left him? Well, he ain't around, so I guess so. Autographs. Well, it ain't every day a couple of live astronauts pass through this town. <laughs> uh, ain't for me, uh, for my wife. Who shall I make it out to? Dwayne. Let's say just under the ridge. Somebody's trying to hide something. Let's see how big. Look at this. Like the heat of a blast furnace to fuse these rocks together. Yeah. They found something. This rock could be just the thing we need to prove what we saw. You know that? Morning. Oh. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? What's up? This is private property. Flat Butte Mining. So? <laughs> You're trespassing. We're sorry. Thanks. What have you got there? It's, uh, it's a rock. Found it over there. It's for my kid. He's got a little collection. Well, we're making an exploratory operation here. You're going to have to leave that. Uh, we're not going to jump your claim no. if that's what you're worried about. Then there's no reason not to give it to me, is there? <clears throat> no, uh, I guess not. Let's get out of here. 
out of here. anybody out since high school. How's your other hand? Fine. Why? Oh, great. I think they still want to talk to us. Stick around here and try to explain this. Let's go. Right. Two men have been killed, and all you can tell me is it was an accident? We can't afford accidents like that. We're trying to reelect a president. Do you realize this could put all of us in jail? Well, there is no way any of us can be connected with what happened. Two men are dead. We don't handle things that way. This is the White House, for Christ's sake. Well, Bancroft and Price aren't exactly cooperating with us. They're the ones who were responsible for what happened out there. Fine, fine. Well, Frank, I'll just have you explain that to the grand jury and to the Senate Investigating Committee, and to the newspapers. I'm sure they'll all be very understanding. Look, I know we're operating under complicated conditions, but we've got to stay on top of this. Nobody. The Xochitl Plateau in Mexico. Mm. Now, this portion of the markings are identical to the symbols we saw on the ship. No one's ever been able to figure out what these Xochitl markings mean, or who made them, or why. But they were made hundreds, maybe thousands of years ago. And they can only be seen from the air. If this isn't the wildest coincidence, then what you're saying is that beings from another world have been here on Earth before. That's what I'm saying. Okay, go on. The Great Pyramid of Tetanapa. Yeah. Now, this is bigger than any pyramid in Egypt. Yeah, right. No one knows who built it or why. But here's the best part. This pyramid is honeycombed with passageways, and there are inscriptions on the walls. Now, here's some drawings of them. Compare these with these. You see what I mean? They're similar to the spaceship. Yeah. Too similar, Harry, for it to have been any coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, I think they have the same route. Developed differently, but from the same source. Yeah, yeah, so there's a connection. Yeah. If this alien symbol is part of the Xochitl markings, then the Tetanapa inscription could be the key to the whole translation. 
It's worth a shot. Ah, thanks, boss. Where are you? I was just wondering about him. Who he was, what he did, where he came from, what his life was like. Who are we going to see again? His name is Mills, Professor Andrew Mills. He runs a research lab at Western Tech. You think he can help us? Well, he's a professor. We give him the rock and see if he can tell us what melted it. He ran a NASA seminar on astrogeology before you got into the program. If anyone can help us, he can. Great. Hope them boys can fly better than they can drive. Well, how's it going? Any luck? Well, uh, one word in ten makes any sense. Well, let's start. I'll check back in a couple of hours, see how you're doing. Hi, where's Paul? He's in the lab. What do you got for me? Well, we still haven't found out how they died, but they didn't suffer any obvious external or internal injuries. Our lab work may turn up something, though. Do you have any idea when they died? I mean, before or after the crash? No, we don't. Why is the time important? Yes, yes. Yes, I want to know if they were dead, how they made a controlled landing with that ship. What else do you have for me? A height, six feet, one inch, weight, 200 pounds. Obviously a biped, thumb, four fingers, five toes, and pale blue eyes. His heart, lungs, other organs, they're mostly identical to ours, physically, that is. Biologically, we're going to have to wait for the lab results. One surprising thing, though. Yeah. Now, we have an appendix, a tailbone, and a an hardarian gland behind the eyeball. Yeah? He's got them, too, and they're useless to us. I don't know about him, but it's obvious that we've both gone through a parallel evolutionary process. It's startling. We've run every conceivable test on the exterior, and we still have no idea what brought it down. No idea at all? No, sir. Nothing? No, sir. Keep trying, dear. Keep trying. Anything. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, take that down to the equipment room, will you? Harry, can I see you for a minute, please? Yeah, sure, Phil. Sure. What can I do for you? Look, I'm not a nuclear engineer, but... My opinion for what it's worth is that this is an end fusion drive. Fusion? What kind of fuel? Probably hydrogen. I scooped it up as it went along. Well, how could it create temperatures high enough to make a fusion reaction? It takes one million degrees, as far as we know. As far as we know. And there's another thing. Again, I'm just guessing. But I don't think this thing was capable of interstellar travel. Just couldn't have generated enough speed. Where do you think it came from? A mothership. Something bigger and faster than we can imagine. Here we go. God, that's it. That's it. It's a piece of sandstone. It's quite common to the region where you found it. 
But was it melted by the heat of the spacecraft engine? Probably. But there are several dozen other sources that generate temperatures sufficient to do exactly the same thing. So what do we got? What you got, Lou, is a piece of rock that's been subjected to a great deal of heat. And that's all. If you want to show that the Air Force is concealing a flying saucer, you've got to have substantial proof, or you're just another nut. But we saw it. What do you think? You think we're a couple of nuts? No, no, I believe you. But in the last analysis, my opinion means nothing. I think you witnessed something extraordinary. And if what you're suggesting is so, then you're talking about the most significant event in the history of mankind. But nobody's going to believe you unless you can prove it. Well, I guess we're just counting on a little more help. Now, how do we prove what we saw? All right. Let's go at it from another angle. If the Air Force does have a UFO in their hands, where would they hide it? Well, it'd have to be close to the crash site. And someplace secure, like a military base? There are four or five bases near there. Yeah, but it'd have to be one with the proper equipment to study it. A lunar receiving station. Hangar 18. Let's go find that thing. Kelso has deciphered the alien's language. This is a translation of a document found aboard the uh, spacecraft. Now, the translation is very rough and is incomplete, but if what we can read is true, and there's no reason to doubt that it isn't, then all of the previous information that we have had about the origin of mankind and the human race is absolutely False. What are you talking about here? This is a report of a previous visit of the spacemen to Earth. This report speaks of the capture, the training, and the use of certain animals as slaves, both male and female. The slaves worship them as gods. Then what they refer to as animals were Pre-humans? Yes. The report also speaks to the fact that the female slaves found it a great honor to be chosen to live with and to bear the offspring of the gods. Good Lord. You see, it's no coincidence that the spacemen are almost identical to us. It is not, Sarah, a case of two species developing, evolving independently of each other. Those ancient spacemen altered forever our evolution. They are the missing link. Do you know what you're saying? Yes. We, mankind, the human race, are their children. What we must find out now is why they're monitoring us, why they're watching us. Thank you, Ricky. Frank, see the latest California polls? They predict the president's going to take the seat by a landslide. Great. Great. It's fantastic. We got everything buttoned down. We're going to do all right. Ten days. There's ten more days. We keep everything buttoned down for ten more days, and we get four more years. We don't have any problems, right? I mean, I told the president everything was under control. Oh, everything is under control. Price and Bancroft are running around the desert chasing their tails. It's all covered. I'm staying on top of it every minute. Good. I'm counting on you. This is Lafferty. This is Wilson. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Bancroft and Price have just filed a flight plan for Midland, Texas. Midland? That's 50 miles from Hangar 18. Shit, how did they find out? I don't know, sir. When they left Mills' office, they went directly to the airport. Now, damn it, it's up to you to keep them from getting to that hangar. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Wilson, this is in your hands. I understand. Why did it take you so long to rent this thing? Oh, the guy said something about washing the car. <laughs> no wonder they're number two. Still dirty. something wrong with the brakes. Oh, buddy, the brakes are gone. So is the emergency. Seat covers are ruined.
the hell is he doing? Jesus Christ, stop him! Take care of him. Asphyxiated? How? These broken glass vials contain chemicals, an element similar to potassium cyanide, a form of sulfuric acid, and several other compounds. Now, when combined together, they form a gas, a deadly toxin. It must have spread throughout the ship. Well, when we first went aboard, our instruments didn't indicate anything dangerous. It had dissipated by then. However, we did find traces of it throughout their bodies, in their bloodstream, in their lungs, and most of their organs. The vials were jarred loose and broken. Probably when the satellite hit. Oh, how ironic. They're light years ahead of us in intelligence. And yet they were killed because of a stupid accident. This music. Is it one of the ship's recordings? Oh, no. It's a local station. I've tapped through to their monitoring system. Terrific! Yeah, but I still haven't figured out what method they're using to record and store all this stuff. Magnetic. Doesn't appear to be. The recordings themselves seem to be on sort of crystalline microchips. Crystal. Keep at it. We interrupt this program to bring you a news bulletin. Lewis Price, a NASA space shuttle pilot, has been killed in a traffic accident in Texas. The man who left the scene of the accident has been identified as Stephen Bancroft, a space shuttle commander. Bancroft and Price have been the target of charges that they were responsible for the death of an Air Force officer That's during a full. recent shuttle flight. More details as they... I just heard about Price myself. I have no details. You knew ab about Steve and Lou being blamed for Gates' death? Yes, I did, but... Why didn't you tell me? Because I've been checking it out. I've been trying to find out where that story came from. I want to see Steve Bancroft. 
I want to know whether Lou's death had anything to do with what they saw up there in space, about what we've got here in Hangar 18. No, no, you've got my assurance. There is no connection. Th that's not good enough! I want to talk to Steve Bancroft myself! Now, if he's not here in the morning, I'm going to walk right out of here, and I'm going to hold a press conference, and I'm going to tell him things that you don't want to hear. NASA is not going to take the rap on this one. You don't understand the whole picture, Harry. Morrison, I'm telling you, if anything happens to Steve Bancroft, I'm holding you personally responsible. Price and four other men. Dead. How could it have gone this far? It was a choice between two bad alternatives. Either let them get to Hangar 18 or stop them. And what are our choices now? We should have taken Price and Bancroft into our confidence like I wanted to do. You think Forbes is serious about going to the press? Oh, I can guarantee you he's serious. You know, there's a lot more to this now than salvaging an election. A lot of people can be implicated. Well, thank you very much, General. I'm sure we are all aware of our situation. Do you think I enjoy being in the middle of this? We've got to start talking about alternatives here, considering options. Some decisions have to be made. This problem is not going to go away. As long as Hangar 18 exists, the problem exists. What the hell are you saying? Aren't we in this deep enough already? Yeah, so deep, there's no going back. If we don't finish what we started, it's all over for the president, and it's all over for us. If we stop now, we don't stand any chance at all. All right, let me hear your thinking on this. There are airplane crashes every day. Even at military bases. Identification, sir. One moment, sir.
This is Sector 10. The subject has just entered Building 43. Their power plants, defense installations, and industrial complexes. Yeah, right. Those symbols on the bottom there, can you translate those? I can try. Get the terminal up here, run them through the computer, see what I come up with. Let's do it. Let's do it. Phil, get up here. I got something. What are you doing here? The, the, the base security call. Base security? Uh, yeah, they, they said I'd find you here. Come on. Where? Come on. We, we'll take you back to Hangar 18. You'll be safe there. There it is. 
Yeah. They, they didn't want us to talk about it. And there it is. Lou's been killed, you know that? I know, Steve. And they've been trying to kill me. We've been set up from the start! What the hell's going on, Harry? Steve, I don't know. But we're gonna find out. Come on. Harry! Steve, Kelso's got a translation. Get in here right away. Evacuate your men. All right, let's move out. Three times, Harry, I keep on getting the same answer. These are all designated landing areas. Oh, my God, they're coming back. Now what, Harry? Uh, Phil, get the equipment up here and make a hard copy print out to the rest of you. Uh, keep checking the dates and... Uh, Last night's massive explosion at Wolf Air Force Base in West Texas. Astronaut Stephen Bancroft, NASA Deputy Director Harry Forbes, and a small crew of technicians miraculously survived the blast. Initial accounts indicate they were shielded from the explosion inside what NASA claims to be an alien spacecraft. Press representatives from around the world have been gathering since early this morning in anticipation of a news conference to be held by Mr. Forbes this afternoon. As yet, there has been no official statement from the White House.